The most visible providers of adult education are typically colleges, universities, and boards of education. As mentioned last week, while much of adult learning goes on in informal settings and by individuals on their own, formal adult education offered through traditional educational institutions tends to be the most recognizable. This video will provide an overview of adult learning in colleges, universities, and boards of education. Based on the classification systems that were presented in video clip 8.1, they could be considered Type 2 agencies by Schroeder, educational institutions by Jarkinwald and Merriam, Type B institutions by Kowalski, and tax-supported sponsors by APPS. During this video, please reflect on the following analysis questions. How would you classify adult learning in colleges, universities, and boards of education based on the classifications that were introduced on the video clip 8.1? What experience, if any, do you have learning as an adult in colleges, universities, and boards of education? What is the scope and nature of adult learning in colleges, universities, and boards of education in Canada? And what are some of the similarities and differences of adult learning in colleges, universities, and boards of education? Post-secondary education includes formal educational activities for which high school completion is the normal entrance requirement. Post-secondary education providers develop and deliver formal educational activities and award academic credentials. Despite considerable rhetoric around the importance of lifelong learning, the average age of Canadian college and university students has remained remarkably constant over the last 40 years and the age of a typical post-secondary student remains between 17 and 24. A recognized post-secondary institution in Canada is a private or public institution that has been given full authority to grant degrees, diplomas, and other credentials by a public or private act of the provincial or territory legislature or through a government-mandated quality assurance mechanism. Post-secondary education includes apprenticeship or trade certificates or diplomas, college, CGEP, or other non-university certificates or diplomas, university certificate or diplomas below the bachelor level, or a university degree. Post-secondary providers must be recognized as such based on these factors. The first one is that education must be part of the provider's mission. The provider must offer programs that are available to, or they must be advertised to, the general public. So this would exclude, for example, businesses or hospitals that offer training exclusively to their own staff. The second requirement is recognition, and the provider must offer programs leading to degrees, diplomas, or certificates that are recognized by the academic community in Canada, by similar providers, by provincial or territorial governments, or by appropriate professional or business organizations. The third requirement is membership, and this requires that the provider be a member of, or recognized by, a national accreditation or professional organization that is recognized by provincial or territory governments or by foreign governments. The fourth requirement is affiliation. The provider must be affiliated, associated, or federated with, or owned by, a recognized provider. And finally, the recognition by government. They need to be recognized by a province or by the Canadian Student Loans Program or other federally funded programs for supporting post-secondary programs. With very limited exceptions, post-secondary providers derive their authority to function and grant degrees from the province in which they are located. Early higher education institutions in Canada began as denominational schools organized by various religious groups in the 17th century. Among the universities that still exist today, McGill was founded in 1821, Queen's in 1840, the University of Toronto in 1849, and Laval University in 1852. The period after the Second World War is generally known as a time of huge expansion of the entire post-secondary education sector, which saw increasing government involvement in both the regulation and funding of higher education, with the secularization of many denominational schools. Today, almost all Canadian universities are secular institutions established under provincial legislation. They are created primarily for the purpose of offering degree programs and to conduct research. They are autonomous corporations but are public in the sense that they receive the lion's share of their revenues from provincial operating grants. Despite the fact that education is a provincial responsibility, the federal government has played a major role in the development of higher education in Canada. For the most part, the federal government has responsibility for research, training and economic development. 
There was a general expectation that the trend towards lifelong learning would drive higher university enrollment demand from adults over 35. However, current trends do not support this hypothesis. Although the number of students in this age group has tripled in the last 30 years, from 6,000 in 1980 to more than 18,000 in 2010, their share of all full-time undergraduate students has remained at 2%. In 2010, 6 out of 7, or 86% of students studying full-time at the undergraduate level were under the age of 25. In 2010, approximately 24% of undergraduate students were studying part-time, and 60% of part-time students were over the age of 25, compared to 13% of full-time students. Continuing education is also established at most Canadian universities, and it includes all forms of continuing education offered by a university, including not only single courses or entire programs, but also single events such as presentations, conferences, and workshops. In most instances, however, university continuing education is used more narrowly to mean courses, programs, and other offerings delivered by special units within the university called university extension, continuing education, continuing studies, or something similar. According to the Association of Universities and Colleges of Canada in 2009, there were more than 400,000 adults enrolled in credit and non-credit continuing education courses offered at Canadian universities. Many of the continuing education courses lead to a degree or certificate and are aimed at adults looking to upgrade their education or learn new skills. Some universities, such as Simon Fraser University in Vancouver and the University of Western Ontario in London, have campuses dedicated almost exclusively to continuing education. Canada's colleges are geographically dispersed and are present in over 900 communities across Canada. Canadian colleges are created under the authority of a province's Colleges Act and primarily offer certificate, diploma, and transfer or continuing education and professional development programs requiring less than three years of full-time study. Canadian colleges also provide literacy and academic upgrading programs, pre-employment and pre-apprenticeship programs, and in the in-class portions of registered apprenticeship programs. In addition, a wide variety of workshops, short programs, and upgrades for skilled workers and professionals are also made available through colleges. Colleges are mandated to be closely tied to their communities and to act quickly to foresee and meet the changing knowledge and skills of their regions. Diplomas are generally awarded for successful completion of two- and three-year college programs, while certificate programs usually take up to one year. University degrees and applied degrees are also offered in some colleges, and others provide university transfer programs. In Quebec, CGEPs offer a choice of two-year academic programs that are a prerequisite for university study, or three-year technical programs that prepare students for the labor market or for further post-secondary study. Canada also has private colleges, often referred to as career or business colleges, or private training institutions, which may be licensed or unlicensed by provincial or territorial governments. These colleges provide professional and vocational training for profit. In some jurisdictions, these private colleges may receive some public funding, but they are funded mainly through tuition fees charged to students. In addition, many public, Catholic, and Francophone district school boards in Canada whose primary mandate is elementary and secondary education, also offer a broad range of programs directed at adults. School board adult education programs are typically offered as evening or weekend activities in high schools. Sometimes they are also offered at facilities specifically designated as adult high schools, or in a few cases at community colleges. These programs offered may be credit-free or non-credit, academic upgrading, or vocational training. Please reflect on the following synthesis questions. What classification system from video clip 8.1 do you find most useful for classifying adult learning in colleges, universities, and boards of education? What experience, if any, do you have learning as an adult in colleges, universities, and boards of education? How does this compare to other adult learning experiences you've had? What is the scope and nature of adult learning in colleges, universities, and boards of education in Canada? And what are some of the similarities and differences of adult learning in colleges, universities, and boards of education?